Hi, everyone. Welcome to Symbiosis 2. And uh, this is Dorothy welcoming you to Mabel's Paint Along session. Today, she's going to show us how she does the Cosmos and B. And uh, you will have received her um, materials list. So feel free to paint along with us. All right, take it away, Mabel. Thanks, Dorothy. Hi. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Well, it's a Sunday morning for me. And um, I'm just going to kind of wing this session and make it like a very chill paint together. Um, uh, and just, uh, you, can, you can just kind of ask me questions along the way and we can have like a conversation. Um, yeah, so this is just, I'm gonna preface this to say it's gonna be a very chill session. <laughs> um, just a little bit of an uh, introduction uh, about myself. So um, I'm Mabel Key, and I'm from Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Um, sunny Malaysia, sunny all year round. It's either sun or rain here, and it's really humid. <laughs> Just FYI. Um, yeah, so uh, I've just started picking up watercolor back in 2019. Um, and it's not like, it's, it wasn't something that I thought that I would do well at first, because when I think of watercolor, I think of like the times when you're in school and you just, you know, take a brush and paint and just play around. Um, but then I started realizing that watercolors, you can actually use it to create such beautiful detailed paintings. And that's where, to me, it started getting interesting and it piqued my interest. So I kind of picked it back up in 2019, attended a workshop, kind of learned the ropes of the basics, and then I just paint. Um, as much as I can. Uh, that's so far until where I've got to now. Um, and whatever that I'm sharing today, it's just more of like my technique that works for me. Um, and I, I, it's, it's still a learning process. And I probably, this kind of techniques will, probably will change for me along the years, who knows, but it's just, uh, I'm going to share what I know today. I'm um, feeling a lot of pressure <laughs> to demo this, um, but I'll keep it as simple as possible because we only have an hour. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to show up. This is what we're trying to paint today. Um, I will just have to switch my camera. Give me a minute. Okay. Um, my video is not uh, mirrored, right? It looks, are you able to read Cosmos clearly? All right. Um, I'm, I'm just going to show you the piece that I did for the exhibition because what we're going to paint today is also mainly based on um, what I've done on this piece here. So let me just get a bit closer. So this is the B that um, we're trying to achieve today. And it's just a very chubby B um, that has you know, a bit of a reflection from the sunflower. And that's why it has a bit of uh, orange um, at, at his belly. And then this is the cosmos that um, I did. And so what I have here on my first piece, this is actually a test piece that I did before doing the final version um, of this piece. And uh, the techniques that I'll be showing today is uh, more towards the outcome for this piece, right? Okay, so I'll 
going to just explain a little bit about my uh, process. In order to get to this, I wish it's as simple as just uh, starting with a pencil and just draw and paint in. But uh, I go through three different phases to come to this end result here. Okay, just. So the first thing that I usually do is I'll grab my iPad and go onto Pinterest and kind of just scroll or search for references. So first step is always getting your references. And for my piece, this is actually a collage of um, my references that I use to paint um, as a, that I use it as a reference to achieve the final look that I want. And this is the cosmos that, um, that I was referencing in this photo here. So what do I usually look at in the reference is that I will try to see where the light is so that I can identify where the shadows and the highlights will be. So if let's say I take this reference and give it a minute to study where the lights and shadow is, I can tell this is where the highlights will be. And then this is also where the shadows um, are for the petals. And it's always when, uh, to me, when I paint, it's always looking at light and shadows. So even within, the darkest shadows, there'll be even a darker, darker version of the shadow. And then even in the light uh, of the highlights, there will be a lighter highlights of the highlights, if that makes sense. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so this is just one of the reference that I use. And then um, these are like the bees that I use uh, as reference. And because I wanted a side uh, look of the bee, so I gathered this and kind of collage them together to um, sort of study um, the anatomy of the bee or more like how, where the fluffiness of the, the, the do you even, I, I don't know what, what this are called, these are not feathers. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what these are called, but it's like uh, the fur. Let's just say it's the fur, <laughs> right? Uh, so that I can kind of know where to place the slight fluffiness of this bee here. Okay. So once I kind of have a look at my reference, um, the next thing is to translate that into a kind of like a monotone drawing so that I will, so that I know where the shadows and the lights is. So this is um, my study that I did uh, before I actually start to paint. Um, so as you can see here, I'm just taking one uh, color pencil because it's just a monotonal study. Um, just one color pencil and try to identify where the light is coming. So for this, the light is coming from here. And there's certain areas where the light hits, they will be um, brighter. And when there's no light, it will be in the shadow. So as you can see in some of my uh, sunflowers here, there's a highlight the light will be hitting here and then this is the shadow and that's um the for the b it's like i want it to have a bit of a reflection of the um of the light from the sunflower even though actually bees don't really reflect light but i just want to add that kind of a spin to my version of um, the painting. So I did a study of this. And sometimes 
um, studies doesn't come out exactly as uh, it is when you paint. Because to me, when I paint, I go to, towards um, more like an intuition feeling. So this is just like a base for me to, to use as a reference. So I, I don't end up following it um, very, very to the dot. And then this is um, for the Cosmos piece that I did. And um, I think we will just be painting this piece today. Um, okay. So once um, we have the reference, we have the study, um, then this, is kind of like the base of my whole uh, process. And it's what will kind of, it, it kind of stopped me from making too many mistakes along the way, because I have something that uh, I kind of know and I can actually refer back to. And yeah, so the next thing is more like, um, I'll choose the colors and that's where I did the, color study for this piece. So this is the color study and I kind of pick and choose what color I like and kind of also see how the color uh, is when I use it as the lights or the highlights or the shadow um, for the piece. Okay. Um, Right, so just let me put that away and I'm gonna talk about the materials that I'll be using. So the materials that I'll be using is uh, this. I'm just keeping it pretty simple. Um, for the Cosmos, I'm only using like three colors, um, one, two, three, four, about four, sorry, four colors for the Cosmos. Um, and the main color is this ruby red. And for the shadows of the Cosmos, I will be using um, a ultramarine violet. So I just choose purple as the shadow. I, I kind of want to give it a bit more color instead of using like a very dark red. And I know the purple just kind of complements the, the red for me. And then the, in the middle, we will be using a, a pure yellow. And then um, for the this middle part here, I'm going to be using a <clears throat> burnt sienna, um, which I have it here. And probably I'll be using a bit of permanent alizarin crimson um, just to darken up certain areas, like the darkest of the dark. And then for the B is really just like three colors as well. Um, I'll be using sepia and then yellow and a cadmium orange. This is White Knight's cadmium orange. Okay, let's go ahead to do some sketching. Oh, okay, beside the paints, sorry, I forgot to mention um, the brushes that I'll be using. This is just a size uh, four and size two. So I use the Escoda size four and the Princeton Velvet Touch size two. And these are kind of just like my go-to brushes that I use for every almost everything that I paint. Um, it just works for me. And then I have like a cup of water here to wash off my brush. And the paper that I'll be using, these are uh, 185 GSM Arches cold press paper. Um, these are like from the sheets that I cut it down to size. And um, uh, sorry, Mabel, I just want to tell everyone that I have sent two um, reference photos for the Cosmos flower in the chat. Okay. 
in case you want to look at the reference. Okay. Sorry, I have to like move things about my desk because my desk is pretty small and there's so many things around. Um, I have like a big palette here as well to kind of like mix my color. So I kind of have to move it like around the table. Okay, so I'll just start uh, doing the sketch. Um, I'm, I'll be using like a pilot, you know, pencil. This, these lids um, in this pilot, you know, they are actually water soluble. Uh, so it, when you actually paint it over, it kind of dissolves um, the pilot lid, so it's not very obvious. So I like to use this. And then um, I have like, I always have like a kneaded eraser inside here, this container here to like uh, just erase when I need to. Okay. Um, so basically uh, once I have this reference uh, here is, it's uh, it will already tell me which petal that um are the above and which petals are below. So this is based off that reference image that I study, and just I transfer it and kind of put in the shading. Okay, I will be using this as uh, a guide to draw to draw the, the flower, the cosmos in. And cosmos are very uh, simple. I would say the shape. So it's just a circle in the middle. What I usually do is just a circle in the middle. And to get these petals pretty kind of evenly um, the distance from the middle to the outside here to be even, I'll just draw like a very light big uh, circle around the middle circle. That just kind of give me a guide to, to know how far that I need to draw the petal. And then I will just start with one petal that goes out like that. So if you take a look at the petal reference, um, nothing is actually uh, even, evenly spaced out or the petals is perfect. So you can actually be imperfect here and just go, just don't draw a straight line, <laughs> right? Okay, and once, once we have this first petal down, um, the next petal, I'll just start slightly beside and kind of imagine it's at the bottom. So I'm not really following this too much. I'll just go with how I, feel like drawing. So I'll just, but then I will try to overlap the petals uh, one above another so that I can give it some depth. And then this petal, imagining it is slightly at the bottom. So it comes out here and Cosmos petal has a bit of a, a jagged edge at the end of the petal. So I'll 
just add that slightly and then comes out like that. And I'll just keep going. Some petals are being bigger than, than the other. And then sometimes I leave a slightly bit more space and just kind of imagine the petals coming out like this. And then just keep going about. So I'm kind of like alternating some petals that are bigger than the other so that it doesn't, um, so that's not perfect. And if you take a look at the reference of the petals and you kind of see that when it's, so I'm just going to grab the reference here. So you kind of see that um, the middle is actually the petals, each petals has a very small middle that kinds of fan outwards that is bigger. So you just try to keep that in mind um, when you draw in the petals. And I'll just go this way. Just go this way. And then coming out like this. So it's like sometimes I'll just do this. And, and then I feel that it's too much of a gap in between and I'll, I'll just add like petal to fill that up. And that will be a petal that is at the bottom of this petal when I paint it. So I'll go towards this. It's just being imperfect, but when everything is together, it kind of looks all right. So just adding some petals in between. Just go with how your gut feeling is telling you and just draw in wherever you feel like the petals feels right. And yeah, there we kind of have our flower, really simple, simple one. Okay. And then the borders, you can just, once you are happy with how it looks, you can take the kneaded eraser and erase the border. Because the border is just a guide. Right. And then I will just now sketch the B. So I'm going to use this back as my reference um, for the B. And the B is just a pretty simple. Um, if you divide the shapes to of the B to like the basic shapes. You will, you will be able to see that this is a small oval. This is like kind of a bit of a large round oval. And then this is one over here. And then this is like a bubble at the end of the B here. So I'm just going to break that down. And start with the head. I just go and um, just draw a slightly small oval that is at an angle. And then I'll draw a like a round shape. And then another round shape for the middle abdomen of the B. I'm just lightly sketching it because this will kind of be like my reference base. And if you're, if you're not too happy about it, you can just 
you kind of erase and start over. Then the part of the bee is like slightly elongated, but it's still round. And it ends with like a sharp end here. So this is just um, the basic shapes of the bee. And for the wings, for the wings, you can see that it starts off on the second uh, round shape of the bee and kind of fan, fan out. So this kind of shape is more of like a slight, um, you can draw a straight line here. And then coming down like a triangle, just as a guide, and then coming back in. So it's like a triangle at first. Okay. And then a second triangle. And when you have this triangle, you can kind of just, the second triangle is like at the back of the B. And you kind of use that triangle as a, a guide for you to kind of draw in the wings. So you can kind of round it up a bit. With my eraser, I'm just going to erase this part here. So I'm just going to round it up here and then I want this area to kind of be like an, an angle. And then I will go back and trace the outline of the shapes here and then the abdomen. And I draw in just the bottom of the abdomen and then the butt. Just tracing the outline again. So this is kind of uh, how I build up the basic shape of the B. And there we have it. Once you remove the building blocks that we lay down, and then you just go in with uh, for these stripes that we have, I'm just going to lay down uh, some of the areas as a reference so that when I paint, I kind of know where the color will go. For the stripes, it's just as a guide. And then the wicks it's of the B. And then what you call this? The antenna. Okay. And there we have it. Our B. Okay. Move this aside. So we have <laughs> Dorothy says a bee looks like a cockroach. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay, um, yeah, so we're done with the sketching. Um, now I'm going to talk a bit about the techniques that I will be using for this piece. And it's very simple. I'm going to just keep it pretty simple because we don't really have time. So I'm just going to use two techniques 
one is a, a technique called wet in bed. And then the second one is more like a kind of like a dry brushing technique. For this cosmos that I have here, um, I actually painted this in three layers. I first start off with um, a wet in wet technique as my base. And then uh, the other two to three layers, I kind of build up the highlights and the shadows with a dry brushing technique. So wet in wet technique is just have my my um watercolors here. I just have to move it to this side. So wet in wet technique is that first you wet the layer of the paper. Okay, I'm just going to grab a bigger brush that holds more water. So this is a uh, silver black velvet size 8 brush, which I don't usually use this to paint, but whenever I do a wet on wet technique that is like kind of a bigger surface like this. I will like, I usually like to use this brush because it holds more water and I can kind of just load it up in water and wet my surface with it. So I'm gonna load it up with water and then just lay the water down. Or the wet and wet technique. So what you want to achieve in this wet in wet technique is that when you add um, colors to this wet paper, you'll see that it will kind of distribute the colors around or wherever you have placed the water. So watercolor is like, it will just, it will listen to you wherever you place your water. And then, and you can see that um, my paper is slightly wet. So sometimes you can actually add too much water. Um, when you see it's, it's, uh, when you add too much water and then you do a wet or wet technique, the paint spreads even more. So if you want to kind of control your wet in wet technique, you wet the paper and you kind of just let it sit a while for the paper to absorb the water. And it will just kind of be under the light, you will see it's like slightly damp, but not dry. So my paper now is actually slightly too wet, but I will just work with it. Okay, I'll use my um, size four brush and kind of just activate my paint here. I've put in ruby red, and then beside me here I have uh, the Windsor and Newton. Ultramarine. So I'll, I just want to use this wet in wet technique to kind of blend these two uh, colors together. Okay, so I've just activated it and I'll just, when I pick up the paint, I will, I will actually wipe it a bit on my tissue paper. I have like a tissue paper at all times with me here and I'll wipe it and then I'll pick up the color and I'll just kind of push the color around wherever I lay, wherever I lay the water, I'll just 
push the color around. And then to pick up the second color, I'll wash my brush, tap it a bit on my paper, and then pick up the second color and just put it wherever I want it to go. So I'm just kind of laying this down here. And you can see that the water will kind of like disperse out the paint um, wherever you lay the water down, it will just disperse and it kind of mix the two colors together. So if I pick up, if I wash my brush and then I pick up more paints and I can just like kind of darken certain areas, like I'm putting more pigment to a particular side of uh, the paper and it will just kind of darken the area. So this is one of the techniques that I use. So I'm just going to do it with the ultraviolet marine here, just like kind of darken the edges, just to show you. So sometimes I kind of like just dab, 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 dab it in because the water will do the work for you. So you just have to dab in in certain areas. Okay, and the other technique is a dry brushing technique. So because when I look at the cosmos, they kind of have like natural um, patterns uh, on the petals, which I want to translate that into this when I paint. Um, that's where you can see that there's like dry lines on the petals, like a pattern of it. So that's where the dry brushing technique comes in. So dry brushing technique is just a, taking a brush. You want to kind of prep your paint for this. Okay. So what I'll do is I will add the water, amount of water to my paint. And just let this part of the paint dry. Because what I'm going to do is that I will use a kind of dry to damp brush and pick up this uh, dried paint on my palette here. And then use that to, to build the pattern. So, I'll just clean my brush and then I will dry it. Like what you can tell how dry it is, is that by taking the brush and then you kind of like just tap it at the back of your hand and you can feel that it's just damp. So it's not wet, but just damp. So my paint here is not actually very dry, but I'll just kind of pick it up. And then what I do is just paint, kind of paint lines on the paper. And, and the brush will kind of do the job for you. So it will be like a rough, it will create this rough edge on the paper. And I'll just use this to build up the depths of the petal. So just, it's a, a bit of a slow process that you build up layer by layer. So what I like about watercolor is it's, it's transparency. Even though you kind of make a mistake, you, you can actually cover it back up um, above, like when you build the layers above, you can cover your mistakes. Okay. okay. So this is just like, um, I'm keeping it really simple here um, to just use this tool technique um, to paint.
So bringing back my piece here, I am just going to use uh, my kneaded eraser and just roll it, roll it over the piece to kind of like just pick up any of the pencil lines just to lighten it slightly. Okay. And then now we can start painting. So when I paint a petal, it's always, um, I always have like my paper here and then my paper towel here. And I kind of always have to brush in both hands. <laughs> it's not that I'm going to use both hands to paint. It's just a convenience um, that I sometimes for smaller pieces like this, I kind of use the size four brush to put the water and then I'll use the size two brush to pick up the colors. And I will kind of like prep my colors, um, just adding enough water to the amount or how dark that I want it to be. Sometimes I just eyeball the color really. So starting with this, when I paint, it's always, you, we have to paint petals by petals and you have to paint it alternating petals because if a surface is still wet and then you add in uh, the next petal, you're gonna add more water to that surface, it's going to like blend towards each other. So we, we don't want that. We want like a very clear, uh, um, clear difference of two petals. So we don't want things to blend with each other. So I'll just take my brush and just pick any petals and I will kind of lay this uh, first layer down, which is a wet on wet. So I'm going to just add the water here. Just water on my brush and just making sure that I'm really kind of uh, clean with my edges because you know paint will go wherever water is and just making sure that I get my edges properly and okay what I'm gonna do here is that first I am going to kind of identify where the lights hit in this petal. So the lights will obviously like be, let's say our light source is up here, right? So whatever the lights hit above will be lighter. So I'm gonna kind of just pick up um, my ruby ray and just kind of add at this bottom here, because we know this bottom is going to be uh, the darker area. And I just add to that. Just kind of keep the middles um, a bit lighter. And then I'm gonna take my purple and just kind of add that to the middle part where I'm gonna use this purple as a shadow. So I'm just gonna add, pick that up with my brush and then kind of add where I think the shadows will go. So sometimes you feel like the whites might be too harsh and you just kind of wash your brush and dry it to be damp a bit and just kind of feather out where you feel like it's a bit too harsh. And that's the first layer that we're gonna work with, okay? And then I'm going to skip this petal here because this is too wet and I'm gonna work on the next alternating petal. And this next alternating petal, I can tell that it's actually a petal beneath this petal here. So the shadows for this petal, I am going to lay at the corner right 
a corner left side here, and then it's going to be slightly darker in the middle as well. So with keeping that in mind, I'm just going to lay this uh, water down. It's going to be a wet on wet technique. And I'm just going to make sure that my edges are clean. Okay. Then I'm going to use a size two brush and just pick up the ruby red and kind of just firstly go over where I want the reds to be. Then I'm going to pick up a bit of the purple and kind of just add that to the bottom here to indicate the shadows. Just tap, tap, tap. And if you feel like the shadows are coming too much, you can kind of like pick it. With a damp brush, you can kind of like pick the color back up. And just to correct it. I kind of work as like, as the color move, I kind of correct myself a bit of where I want it to be. Um, yeah. And then, so while this dries, I'm going to skip this uh, petal here and I'm going to paint this next alternating petal. And again, keeping in mind where um, the shadows and the highlights is. So this petal, I kind of imagine that it's coming out from the middle and kind of curving it back down. So I will kind of want to put a bit of a darker shadow at this edge of the petal. So I will just play that. And also what I want to keep in mind is that Whenever there's a petal that is overlapping each other, the petal above it that is overlapping, you want to keep it slightly lighter, lighter than the petal below so that you can, when you add the darker color, the darker shade of um, the darker shade of the petal then you can kind of see the contrast, the contrast of it. So I'm just going to keep this slightly white here and just uh, add the color in. Then I'm going to pick up a bit of the purple. Here and then just gonna add a bit at this edge here to kind of indicate that it's darker. Just a second. Okay, so at this point of time, things doesn't look as nice as how it should be. It's always this stage where. It, sometimes your piece is telling you like it's so ugly <laughs> why you still keep going but just keep going and trust the process because we always have this phase where it's an ugly duckling face so yeah um, so I'm gonna skip this petal and the ones below, and I'm just going to go with the next petal. So again, same step, repeating what I have done for the past uh, three petals. I'm just going to kind of 
keep in mind where the shades and shadows are and play the color down. And I'll just repeat this first step um, across all the petals. Um, I think it's, I don't think I'll be able to do everything on um, the entire, entire flower here because of the time constraints that we have. It's already 10, 21 and oh gosh, I got nine minutes. Okay, so, uh, so you kind of get the idea of how I lay the first layer down. Um, and then once I get every, every petals down, I will go in with the second layer, which is the dry brushing. And the dry brushing technique is where you kind of see things starting to get alive. So I have, so just now that I added water to my um, colors here, there's some areas that are already dry. So I'll just use that color, those dry color, dry my brush and kind of like just pick up the color with the dry brush or a damp brush. And then where I think the shadow is, that's where I will put the colors. And for this petal, the first petal that I've painted over with the first layer, I'll just go in at the base here and kind of like just fan it up. So if your brush is slightly feeling too damp, you can just kind of um, touch it on your paper, like on your tissue paper, and then so that it gets a bit of the moisture out of the brush. And I'll just fan, that, fan the color out. And as you can see, the color, I don't know if this is, and as you fan it out, you can see that there's some areas where the color are darker, and that's where it starts building. So I'll build the color at the base of the petal that's near the middle circle. And then I want to add a bit of a, of a darker shades at this corner here. So I kind of just on a straight line, slowly build that up. And this process kind of takes time um you have to just really go slow and build at least two layers but with each layer you kind of want to have a look at where you think more color should go or where the darker color should go so you just want to build that up so I've kind of built uh, a bit of a shadow at the bottom and then at the top of the petals here, keeping um, the middle of the petals like a light and that will be my highlight. So I'll just continue. This is like the first, the second layer and then I'll go in with a third layer and just kind of like tease the color a bit more. And you can't get your brush. Um, the tricky thing about this dry brush technique is that when the brush gets too dry, it's not going to pick up any color. So you just have to find um, the balance of how damp your brush is and uh, to kind of build this effect. So I'll, once you repeat this, um, this technique across all the petals, you will start to see um, the flower is coming alive with this light and shadow. And if let's say I go on towards 
the second photo here. I'll just, I'm just saying where I feel the color should be darker or the shadow is. So for this petal here, the bottom, it's a petal that is at the bottom of this petal beside it. So I'm gonna build the shadows on this side here. So don't be afraid to go a bit darker. That's okay. Because watercolor dries lighter than usual. So I just build that up. And it's just this technique that I will use it across all the petals. We're just repeating that. And you can kind of see um, you are already building up the light and the shadow of the petals. And trust me, when you actually do the entire flower, um, it, you, it, it will just be, it will just come to life on its own. So just trust the process. Okay. Um, okay, I think let's, let's move on to the B. Oh, just um, for the, the middle of this um, cosmos is pretty simple. You just have to take a yellow and it's not a wet on wet technique, it's just a wet on dry technique. You just pick up, kind of activate the color, pick it up and just lay it down. And that's like, that's like the base of the, uh, what do you call this? I'm sorry, I'm very bad with this scientific all the anatomy of the flowers, I need to study about this. But you just kind of paint the yellow around. And then once that is dry, you can just take a, um, I will take, um, what color? I'll take a burnt sienna, which I have it here. Kind of just this is what I have, right? And, and I will just pick up the color with my brush and with like a 90 degree, I'll just use the tip of the brush to kind of stipple the stamens or is this called stamens in the middle of the cosmos? Just random, randomly. And you can do this in like a few layers to build up the, uh, you see here. You can just do a few layers of this uh, at the corners where the petal meets to kind of build the depths of um, this part of the flower. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Just need to build the layers. And then let's, let's just, um, Dorothy, I think we're gonna run over slightly. It's fine, go ahead. So for the B, um, I'm just going to use the yellow of the B. So for this B here, uh, it's mostly a, also the same technique. I'll start with a wet on wet. So I lay down the yellow and then the orange so that it kind of blends together. And then um, to darken certain areas, I will use the dry brushing technique to kind of like draw out or fan out the colors to kind of give the illusion of um, the fluffiness of the bee. So with watercolor, you want to work with the light colors first because the bee will have a sepia color, which is really, really dark. So I'll just prep my 
a yellow here. You can pick any yellow that you have. And I have an orange here, which, which I will be using that to kind of paint the belly of the bee. Just pick up a bit and then Okay, so you want to kind of identify for the bee where the darker um, stripe is. So this is the darker stripes here, which you want to keep it, um, keep it for the sepia and then paint the rest of the, the bodies yellow and orange. So again, um, okay, because this B is quite small, the areas to paint is quite small, I'm going to use my size two brush. And I'm just going to, again, with the same technique, uh, just wet the areas with my size two brush. Because it just picks up less water. I'm going to just wet the areas. Then I'm going to pick up the yellow and kind of just add it at the top of this area here. And if it's too much yellow, just use your brush to pick some of the color out and then wipe it off your uh, tissue. And then a bit of the orange so that at the bottom of the bee so that it kind of blends in together. And you can go as dark as you want so the orange will kind of be like the shadows area for the yellow and you want to repeat that for this part of the stripes so picking up the yellow Bring it up here and then I'm going to pick up the orange and just lay it at the bottom. And if you feel like the orange is too much, you can just kind of blend it in with the yellow. Okay, then the last small part here is this. portion the cup the yellow and then the orange and once this dry you can kind of see that um it's it's dry lighter so if i feel like it's a bit too light i'll again go in with a damp brush um and the color on my brush and kind of just go through the shadows area that I want to darken it up. So because this area are smaller, it they will dry faster. And I just want to smooth some of the areas out after laying the color so that it blends um, together with the yellow. And if I want to darken the yellow slightly, I'll just go in with the yellow. Okay. Okay. So we kind of have the basic stripes of our B. And the next step is pretty simple. Um, oh, what I forgot um, on the B is this lines that are like, Y lines on the wings, so I just add that, add that in. Okay, okay. So then I'll take my sepia. So I have my sepia um on this part here, which I'm just going to grab. And most part of the bee is going to be a sepia. 
So I'll just my sepia color. Just here. And sepia can go really like if you add a lot of water to it, it goes it goes like a uh, really dark um like a sort of a light brown black or it can go really really dark like right off the just taking the color directly from the pen it's gonna be like black so you want to be careful when you use sepia because if you go too dark it's a bit hard to undo um with watercolors so that's why with the colors you kind of build off from the lighter layers, light to dark. Okay, with this sepia, we are going to just add where the dark stripe is. So for the head, I want it to have like a sort of a indicator of where the eyes is. So I'm just going to paint the edges of the head. Just adding, you just have to be careful with this because wet on wet, it gets everywhere. So I just try to, okay, just not touch it so much. You see, it has already covered the whites that I want to leave it. So I'll just leave it at this. And I'm, when this happens, I'm just going to build um, the ducts around it later. So I'm going to add this to this part of the abdomen here. And I want to keep in mind that some of the areas I want it to be light as well. So I'm just going to lay the colors at the edges and kind of keep the middle part white so that it has like a bit of a highlight to this part of the bee. I'm just keeping it quite quite light. And then this part here just also doing the same. going to add the colors at the edges and try to keep the needle cut a bit light. And then the part here is just black. Okay, and we have one more cut near the head. Just going to add it at the edges as well. And don't forget the antenna. For my piece, um, for my final piece, I actually gilded the antenna. And also, you want to kind of draw in with the sepia on the lines here. So we have to build up a few layers to get the darkest of the sepia. I don't want to start too dark because once we go too dark, it's a bit hard to go back. And also for the wings, I'm just going to pick up the sepia and then outline Wherever the line of the wings is, I'm just going to outline that. So I'm just outlining this. And then, here. and then those by the wings on, on the wings. Mm going to outline that as well. Okay, 
So our B is almost there. So then I'm going to go back in with, um, with the dry brushing technique and I'll just pick up the paint and kind of like piece the color wherever I want it to be darker. So for the head, I'm just going to keep the edges dark and kind of like keep the middle like a small window for the eye of the V. Okay. And then for the body of the bee, that's also the dry brushing technique where I'm just gonna kind of like fan out at the edges where these two colors kind of meet um the yellow and the black so that it it's indicating it's like it's fluffy. The bee is just fluffy. We're just going to do the lines, like dry brush the lines in. And it's just very simple to do. So if I want certain areas to be darker than it is, I'll just go in with another layer of the dry brushing technique. And then for this abdomen here as well, I will kind of like keep this bottom bit darker and kind of fan out the colors. So I will keep the middle part slightly lighter so that it has a bit of a highlights and shadows to it. And same for this, I'm just going to add the edges. And it's all about building layers for me. Um, this is why I pick like quite a number of layers and hours to Build on the color. And it's just repeating the technique. Just adding in where you want it to be darker. I hope your B is coming out okay. Um, yeah, I, I will actually want to go a few more layers on this even um, just to you up the contrast on certain areas. But yeah, this is the B. And, and sometimes um like for my piece here, because the bee's wings are transparent, I kind of want to add a bit of a color to it. So I just take like a yellow and I'm pretty dry, like also a damp brush and just kind of just tease the color. This, okay, my brush is too dry. Just kind of add the color around to give it like a bit of a reflection. And so that's just not white to the wings. And yeah, there we have it, the B. <laughs> and uh, an unfinished cosmos. I'm so sorry we couldn't finish the entire cosmos, but yeah, it, it's a quite a process to, to finish this. But it's, this is what I've done um, with my piece. Yep. 
Mabel, that was awesome. You did such a beautiful job and I love that bee. Um, it was really nice to see your technique and see how you built up all that vibrancy. And Rachel was typing in the chat that we just have so much more respect for how much, how long your big piece took you. <laughs> so many layers, but that was wonderful demonstration. It was really nice to see your technique. So well done. Thank you. Well, I hope I managed to be fully right because it's a bit hard for me to paint and talk at the same time, but I'm just trying to go through the process of whatever comes in my mind while I paint. You did great. It was really nice to see. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. I hope everyone managed to create a cosmos or a bee. Does Thank you, Mabel. I was just show? watching, but oh, Dorothy, you go first. No, does anybody want to show your work? Mabel, you know that uh, stage you called the ugly duckling stage? Well, I didn't uh -huh. do that, but I'll, I'll show you anyway. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh, your bee looks really good. Oh, my little bee, I like well enough, but my flowers, uh, you'd think I would be able to do it, but no. <laughs> I'm going to say it's late and I'm too tired and all those excuses. Okay, we can try again. <laughs> it was a wonderful mm -hmm. class. I'm looking forward to seeing the recording. I'm going to try it again because I loved how you were able to get your values in. Like you kept calling it a mono drawing, but it was actually a value drawing. Yeah. And every yeah. good drawing needs at least five values and you certainly have them. So that was great. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm gonna go because I'm falling on my face tired and I'm sure Heather is ready to drool. <laughs> so thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. It's an honor to have you with us. Thank you so oh, much. So nice. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Can I show you my bee who is yes, having a bad day? Okay, look at this and then don't laugh. Look. <laughs> it's, <Wow. laughs> it's having <Ew>. a <laughs> This wings is really majestic. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Anybody else want to show your ugly ducklings? I'm still working on it. Judith, Judith, you're working on yours? I, I couldn't get I the V. I got the flower. The wings, okay. yeah. Wait, I got Judith. only the flower. Oh, you got it, Natalie. Yeah. Oh. Slowly, uh, slowly getting there. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't get the V. Not <laughs> It's okay, you can rewatch the recording and try again. Yeah, it's, I hate it's it. A Mabel, slow when process, keep, really. Mabel, when you keep saying it's so easy, right? I really hate it because it's <laughs> it's not easy. It's like, oh yeah, this is very easy. The colors flow where the water is, and then mine is like not behaving. <laughs> but yeah, we'll watch the video again and uh and uh catch catch the things that we missed. For sure, it takes a lot of practice. Yeah, Mabel, definitely like newfound respect. Not that I didn't respect you before, but like respect you even more now. <laughs> because like it takes so much patience just to do one petal or like one small part. And I was just thinking through the whole thing, like how how long <laughs> and how much effort and how much patience, how much dedication you must need to complete that huge piece that you held up yesterday. I was just yeah. like, yeah, it, it just it just hit me again, like, oh my god, so much. Very, very, and, very, very good work. <laughs> and I think this one frame took me like two days over the weekend just to complete this. And then this is like another weekend that I did. And I sat like the whole day literally at my desk just to <laughs> just to build up the, the layers um on this piece here. So it's definitely a lot of labor of love. <laughs> I'm sure it's at least like, I don't know, 30 cumulative hours of work, at least, honestly. Because you said two days over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. My neck, my neck was like hurting a lot. Then like when we catch up, remember the other day, I was like telling you, oh gosh, my neck hurts. <laughs> because it's so big, the piece is so big and I have to, I, I can't lay it on like um any stand it has to be laid flat on my table 
So I'm like constantly just looking down. <laughs> Was that your B, Rachel? No, I think it's Nari. Nari. Nari, do you want to show oh. us again? She's switching. Oh, look at oh, that. that's so cute. <laughs> that's cute. That's very cute. Thank you. Thank you for showing us your work. Maria, have you been drawing with us? Yes. Um, mine, Mine's still so wet. If I held it up, it would just end up a big blur. <laughs> it's, um, I, I actually did a, a flower that was similar to the um, cosmos, but it's a native flower here. And I was putting the leaves around it and I, I did this big wash because I'm not a watercolorist, but I was being very free with the water. So I'm suffering now. I'm looking at it. <laughs> good, good. Thank but, you. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I, if I if I held it up, it had, it had all dribble into each other. But I'm really happy that that um, the ugly stage was a very handy hint because I usually work in gouache, which is very controlling, and I can put it on in pesto and things like that. And but the, when the water has its mind of its own, it's a, a quite a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. and I really Hello, respect Rachel. your big yes. large piece. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But Thank every you. piece really starts off as an ugly duckling for me. Sometimes even it's like I, I don't even know where I'm going to go to when it's at the ugly duckling phase because yeah. I can't see it at that point of time. But I think as I kind of break it down into sections to work mm -hmm. and then it starts, once you start adding the darker color of um, the darker mm -hmm. tones of the color that it starts, like the life is just reading in on its own. You just yeah. have to push through that, that part. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it's a very frustrating part. And um, <laughs> what someone said once that, um, part of watercolor is putting the the water down but actually picking it back up with the brush is a very important part of it too so yeah. um i've been picking up a lot <laughs> yeah thank you yeah. so much it was very it was great thank, thank you. you for calling maria thank well, you can i ask a question um yep. i've got a part that I think I dry stipple and I didn't like the texture. Um, this part, I think it's a bit too, too, the lines are too obvious. I'm not sure. Is there any way to save it? Yeah. So it's, it's this part. So I dry stippled it. Yeah. And then it, it kind of looks very patchy to me. Um, it's, I don't know how to save it. Like, I don't know how, do I, re, do I add more water to remove the lines? If, um, yeah, if you feel that, like certain areas you kind of went over too dark. Mm -hmm. um, what I usually do is just that um, I can actually kind of just change my camera. So if let's say um, I go through this area that I feel it's um, too dark, right? So what I usually do is just, I will take water on my brush and just pick up the water and kind of dry it a bit, like tap it off a bit. And I'll go, I'll just lay the water where I want to pick it up. And then I'll just use the paper towel and just dab it. And, and you can see that um, some of the color gets picked up and it, it's lighter in that area where I want it to be. And you kind of just, you can repeat this process until um, you feel it's at the color that you are happy with and just do it like a few times and you can kind of see the color lightens up. So you still can correct it. <laughs> Don't worry. It's good to know it's not unsalvageable. <laughs> Thank no, you. No. Yeah. Great. Great, I'm gonna stop the recording here. So thank you everyone for joining.